Hubbard's journey of self-discovery took him to England in 1894. Despite past failures at writing, he went to research an idea for a series of short stories he was calling Little Journeys. There he experienced the reformist ideals of arts and crafts and saw for the first time the handcrafted books of William Morris's Kelmscott Press. Hubbard would never be the same. The whole idea of the book as, a, as an art object, as an object that you would have in your home as something important for its objectness as opposed to just its content, that was a very Albert Hubbard thing. Hubbard must have identified very personally with what Morris was doing with the Kelmscott Press because that's what he started out wanting to do was, was make books. So I think he aspired to what Morris was doing. William Morris was an artist, poet, and socialist. He was a driving force in a reformist movement in England that began as a convulsive reaction to the numbing effects of modern industrial society. It gave rise to a new aesthetic anchored by the ideals of simple form, honest craftsmanship, and harmony with the environment. It was called Arts and Crafts, and it influenced everything from simple decorative arts to architecture. They were trying to protest against the Industrial Revolution where everybody was losing the handwork that was involved and the artistry that's involved in making things. The whole feeling, the whole philosophy was getting back to the artist type work, getting back to doing things with your hand, being honest. Every piece that you're making, you're producing with your head, your heart, and your hands. The Japanese say that to be uh, handcrafted is to have a bit of the human in there. They were a more valued work because they had that hand quality. The fact that somebody uh, took time to do it by hand and it wasn't a mass-produced item. I like to think that some of the soul of the people go into that work. William Morris once said, I do not want art for a few any more than education for a few or freedom for a few. His sublime ideal was that arts and crafts would be accessible to everyone. But the high cost of his handmade products made it an impossible dream. William Morris was a socialist, but at the same time, he made luxury goods because he was such a purist about how his, his products were made. Everything was made by hand. So his clients were very wealthy people, often royalty. And this upset him quite a bit. They never really were able to achieve in any great sweeping way affordable, well-crafted goods of the caliber they wanted to produce for the average person in England. That's just something that slipped away from their fingers time and again. But the sublime ideals of arts and crafts were about to come face to face with the practical model of American business.